think it's a storm that's coming. Well, they keep saying it's, you know, like until 4 o'clock, it was supposed to be severe weather and all this stuff. But we didn't, yeah. I didn't get anything anyway. No, nothing. Yeah. However, Monday, was Monday I went up to uh, Boynton. My mom's in a facility up in like at Lake uh, Lawrence in Boynton. Yeah. It was like the end of the world. The sky was I know, right? swirling. It got home, sun's out, everything's <laughs> fine. Good evening, everyone. My name is Annette Gray, and I'm this evening's acting chair. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Site Plan Review and Appearance Board for April 26, 2023. Rochelle, if you could all call the roll, please. Dana Adler is absent. Benjamin Baffer is absent. Carol Perez is absent. Stephen Cohen? Here. Allison Thomas? Here. Linda Perdell? Here. Annette Gray? Here. Okay, thank you. Uh, our approval of agenda, do we have any additions, deletions, or modifications to tonight's agenda? And just to remind you guys, if you, if you um, are okay with the consent agenda, going ahead as consent agenda, then you can keep the agenda as is, but if you want to pull anything, you would do that now. Okay. No addition or changes requested by staff. Okay, so can I get a, uh, approval for both the overall agenda and the, tonight's consent agenda, please? Motion. Yeah. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Dana Adler is absent. Benjamin Baffer is absent. Carol Perez is absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdo? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Okay, so we do have one set of minutes, uh, the March 22nd, 2023. Do we have any changes? Uh, I do not have any modifications. If not, can I get a motion? Yeah. I'll move. Second. I have a first and a second. All in favor? Okay. Dana Adler is absent. Benjamin Baffer is absent. Carol Perez is absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdo? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. At this time, any member of the audience who will speak on any matter that comes under the purview of this board as part of public comments or tonight's agenda, I invite you to stand and be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. By the authority vested in me as a notary of the state of Florida, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, so item number six is public comments. Public comments are limited to any item that is uh, not on tonight's agenda. You, I invite you to the podium to my left, and you will have a limit of three minutes to speak. Once again, that's on any items that is not on tonight's agenda. Okay, seeing none. Few housekeeping details, just a reminder to turn your cell phones off or on silent. City staff will present from the tables in front of me, directly in front of me, and all other public comments or presentations will take place to the podium to my left. And just a reminder, when you come up to do a presentation to include your name and your address for the record. Okay. So we are under the purview of quasi-judicial hearings legally for this board. And I just have a short item here to read. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the city of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes, each for a maximum of six minutes, if the person represents an organization or group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission board members, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon the personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not nor may a decision be based on the numbers of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions made must be on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. 
Sorry, before you go into quasi-judicial, um, we do actually need a motion on the consent agenda itself. Just um, Okay, we can circle the back. Are there any additions, modifications, or deletions to the consent agenda? Just, just to actually approve the items that are on the consent, consent agenda. That was your number eight. So. Okay. Uh, so can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Moved. Okay. Second. I have a first and a second. Roll call, please. Thank you. And Allison Thomas was made the motion. Thank you. Yeah. Dana Adler, Benjamin Baffer, and Carol Perez are absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdoe? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Okay, so that takes us to our first agenda item, A, Fifth Avenue, Delray, 2023-065. And is Ms. Rodriguez presenting that? Yes. Or enter the item into the record for me, please. For the record, my name is Susanna Rodriguez and I'm a planner for Delray Beach. I would like to enter file number 2023-065 into the record. This is for agenda item 9A. It's a class two site plan modification for 5th Ave Delray and it's located at 151 Northeast 5th Ave. The applicant is here to present. Okay, thank you. And the applicant's representative, and microphone to my left and please state your name and address for the record. Okay. Just, just before you get started, can um, we so do ex parte day. communications? <coughs> communications? I have had none. Okay, yep. none. Thank yep. you. Um, hi, my name is Mike Brozier. Um, I represent the ownership of uh, 151 Northeast 5th Avenue, which we call 5th Avenue at Del Rey. Um, it is a five story, 47 unit uh, multifamily development. Uh, that we purchased in 2012 in foreclosure and it has been fully occupied for approximately eight of the last 12 years. Um, our purpose for this uh, renovation was to bring the building up to current um, waterproofing standards because we had some, some uh, water intrusion in the building. And while we're doing that, we decided that we would bring the colors to current market trends. Um, and in the uh, staff review process, they noticed some landscape changes that they wanted, so we agreed to do that. Um, that's really the, the, the gist of what we're doing to this building, is fixing waterproofing and changing the colors. And for the city, presentation, Ms. Rodriguez. So this is for a class two site plan modification for Fifth Ave Del Rey. The property. <laughs> The property is zoned in CBD Central Core Subdistrict and its existing land use is a mix of commercial on the ground floor and residential for the upper floors. In the image you can see the existing ground floor is highlighted with that coral orange color and the residences on the upper four floors are depicted in a light beige color. There's a parking garage in the rear and a clubhouse pool deck area centrally located on the third floor open to Fifth Ave. The request includes the replacement of existing landscaping and lighting on the ground level and within the pool deck area. There's also a color change from a coral beige color to a mix of white and blue gray. The existing orange awnings will be replaced with dark gray awnings and the guardrails are replaced and will have a powder coat finish similar to the awning colors. The pool deck is also being renovated to include outdoor grills and a kitchen, and kitchen counter tops and the grills will be covered with an aluminum trellis. These are your required findings also included in the staff report. The formal site plan findings are not required for this class two modification. Um, 
the proposed landscape modifications are in compliance with section 4616. Landscape modification includes the removal of 13 guava trees that do not meet LDR standards and four dead Washington palms. The dead trees will be replaced with the same tree species and the trees replacing the guava trees also meet the LDR standards. As for the other changes, the proposed lighting does meet the standards in section 468. The trellis proposed on the third story pool deck do meet LDR setbacks and please note that any signage depicted will require a separate application uh, for view. This concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this com on this agenda item? Okay, seeing none, do you have any rebuttal to the city's presentation? Nope, I do not. Okay. The board, would you like to start? Just for the record, and the city doesn't have any rebuttal or cross-examination either. <clears throat> Thank you. No rebuttal to the no rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see. Ms. Allison, would you like to start first? Yeah, I'm kind of sad to see the terracotta go, but um, I think that it's okay with me to bring it up too standards and to upgrade the trees and fix some landscaping. Okay. Thank no you. further comment. Mr. Steven? Yes. Uh, I, I agree. I like that coral color, but it, I, I don't see anything wrong with what you're doing. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Linda? I like the new color better. <laughs> <laughs> so do we. <laughs> um, yeah. I think yeah, replacing the dead trees and things, I think it'll just freshen up the whole place. Yep. Okay, so I would do our board chair a disservice if I didn't mention the graying of Delray. <laughs> She's an advocate for the graying of Delray, so we will miss this splash of color. And for myself, anytime you eliminate fruit trees, you've made an enemy out of me. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. No, I am, I'm okay with the well, We like to call the, the colors a blue-green color, mm. so <laughs> we Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, if, can I get a motion? Move approval of the class two site plan modification 2023-065 associated with the exterior and landscape modifications for Fifth Avenue Del Rey located at 151 Northeast Fifth Avenue by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. A second? Second. For first and a second. Roll call, please. Okay. Dana Adler, Benjamin Baffer, and Carol Perez are absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdoe? Yes. Nick Gray? Yes. Passes with a majority motion. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. So that takes us to item B. And presenting Ms. Howard, Ms. Howard, Howard, can you enter the item into the records for the city, please? I will enter the rec um, item into the record while Alexia joins me. Um, I'd like to enter file number 2022-273 um, into the record. Are there any ex parte communications on this particular item? No. No. Okay, none on my part either. Mr. Carney, are you rec rep representing the? I'm, I'm re representing the thing, but we have our, our architectural. Okay, the floor is yours. Superhero heroes here. With. Have you been sworn in, Mr. Carney? I'm sorry. Have you been sworn in? I was in the room, so okay. I mean. Perfect. Yeah, but I'll swear again. I, I wasn't sure if you had entered yet. You're you're fine if you've already been sworn in. I would never tell an untruth to this committee. <laughs> Um, good afternoon or evening. I'm Tom Carney. I represent the applicant. Um, um, and with me is uh, Randall, excuse me, uh, Carlos Oneros and Carlos Rodriguez from the architectural firm Randall Stoft, Stoft Architects. They are going to be making the actual formal presentation. Um, I'm just here to, to let you know that what, what we have here is a three unit uh, project. It's replacing what was a three unit slash four unit 
uh, rental property. This is going to be individual property, uh, a single family home ownership. Uh, we spent a lot of time, as you can tell by the exterior design, in making sure we have we met all the, the performance standards. We've met all the landscaping requirements. We have native trees. We have shrubbery all around the boundaries. Um, we have wraparound balconies. We've made sure that the 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 project, you know, it has the very nice undulating features in the front, so that you don't have one standard brick wall. Uh, and as you can see, it's a pretty it's a pretty lush design. Uh, and we're very, very happy with it. We've been back and forth with staff for nearly nine months. So we've had a lot of input from staff. We've addressed all their staff. We've addressed all, 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 you know, all the comments. We're real happy with the final design. Hope you are too. Uh, what I'd like, we, 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 we meet the concurrency requirements. We meet the, the consistency requirements. We meet the performance standards. Um, and I'm going to let uh, one, of, one of the Carloses speak to you. And but we're available for questions. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Carlos Linares. I'm with uh, Randall Soft Architects. We're the architects for the project. As uh, Mr. Carney had uh, explained, this is a three-unit um, uh, structure. Uh, it's it's consisted of three three floors each each. Uh, each unit having its uh, two-car garage, um, amenities uh, at, at the rear. Unfortunately, we're, we were not able to give you a, a uh, uh, rear rendering. Uh, but on the site plan, you, you may be able to see that uh, each unit has its own private pool. Um, two-car garage, as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, each unit has its own, own entry. Uh, a great room at the first floor, dining, kitchen. Uh, as well as the foyer, a small office is, is what we are um, uh, proposing for the uh, first floor. Uh, the units range anywhere between 41 to 4,600, 4,700 square feet. So they're pretty decent size uh, units, very luxury, um, obviously, is, is, is what we're proposing um, uh, on the uh, we are meeting all the zoning requirements, setbacks. Uh, obviously, Delray Beach requires additional uh, stepbacks on the third levels, uh, so we've been able to achieve that as well. Um, if, if, um, if, we, if we could go to the uh, next slide. This is just a, an enlarged floor plan of what the three units consist of. Uh, obviously, like I said, two-car garage, kitchen, great room, dining, uh, small um, a uh, office, uh, and uh, each individual will have its own uh, elevator as well. Uh, second second floor will have the uh, the bedrooms, master bedrooms, secondary bedrooms. Every single unit has its own um, uh, private uh, its own bathroom, uh, large large closets. Um, and a couple of balconies as well, can levering over, uh, which gives you the, um, the all the uh, faces uh, moving forward. Um, on the third floor, as I mentioned, Delray Beach requires the additional step back, so we have been, uh, we have achieved that. Uh, and in order for us to be able to do that, we've provided terraces. Uh, for uh, each individual unit uh, with uh, plunge pools. And obviously the plunge pools are uh, perhaps something that, that uh, potential buyers may or may not, may not do, but we do have allocated for that uh, a barbecue area, obviously up on, up on the uh, third level. Um, also another requirement with the city of Delray is also landscaping up on the uh, rooftops, which we've been able to do that with, uh, with, uh, we work with staff on trying to get the, the uh, landscape that is required for that. Um, the, the type of architecture obviously is, is, is a modern, uh, modern uh, type of architecture. Uh, using um, a lot of the, the materials are uh, maintenance-free materials. Obviously, that that's it's very close proximities to the to the water. So we're we're intending to use um, uh, painted stucco, um, maybe some cladding at at, at certain areas. Uh, 
tongue and groove um, ceilings that are going to be Hardy Boys. M mo most of, uh, most of you guys are probably familiar with that, uh, which is also a a, a uh, synthetic uh, product that looks very authentic to wood. Uh, we're using uh, s screens uh, for for shading as well. Uh, if you could just go to the um, th th this is a two two dimensional uh, elevation of the of of the architecture, and we're provide we're um, also providing some screening on the um, on the balconies. Um, like I said, we're using all the materials that are maintenance-free products, uh, stucco, um, uh, some stone uh, porcelain cladding, um, powder-coated aluminum railing, and uh, as far as the colors go, we're we're uh, trying to maintain earth. Tone colors, uh, very subtle um, uh, uh, color variation, um, and I, I think it, it, it definitely complements the neighborhood. Um, we've we've uh, recently completed the um, townhomes just uh, adjoining this property as well, and they're you know very similar in, in, in architecture. That's pretty much. Yep. Um, as you can see, we spent a lot of time to make sure that we did have a very complementary structure in the neighborhood, and we have a design that, as I said, we, we were, it was very important to us that we had a design that would be aesthetically pleasing, meet all the code requirements, meet the performance standards, etc. But one of the items we had to do, and I need to address, is we have asked for an internal adjustment for the back swimming pools. You'll see in your in your files, and the staff will certainly cover that. The um, the the interior setbacks for the swimming pools are 10 feet. These are about 7.1 feet. Um, but the, the reality here is that they are all behind walls. They only affect the other, their neighbor. They, they're, 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 there's only these three properties that are affected, and each one is asking for the same uh, interior setback. It's, it's not a visible from the outdoors. Um, it has been done in other places in, in, in this neighborhood because they are very challenged in terms of trying to get the, what they need, all the amenities that, are, that houses in this neighborhood are used to having. So the pools are kind of on the, are not the largest size pools, but they are decent sized pools. Um, and as I said, they're really separated by walls, and, and both to the sides and to the rear, so that there is no real impact visually to anyone except the people that are asking for the, for the, for the variance. And it is really and truly the same kind of variance that, that uh, excuse me, variant, the uh, internal adjustment that's been used before for similar uh, projects in this neighborhood. So the, you have in your files a justification letter, which went through a bunch of points, which I don't need to reiterate to you all. Um, so that's where we are, but we are available for questions for any of your questions. Okay, yeah. thank you. Is there anyone in the audience tonight that would like to, oh, I'm sorry. Got to go to city Skip staff, staff all together. <laughs> Staff presentation. All right, good evening, board members. Um, as mentioned before, for the record, I'm entering file 20 dash, uh, 2022 273 for consideration of a class five site plan application landscape plan, architectural elevations, and internal adjustment associated with the development for a three fee simple townhomes. Um, the property is located northeast corner of Casarina Road and Venetian, um, sorry, Casarina Road and Venetian Drive, just west of the beach. It is zoned RM with a land use designation of MD, medium density. The subject property is surrounded by RM zoning district. The existing conditions currently is a two-story, five-unit building and the uh, with parking located within the right-of-way along Casarina Road and Venetian Road. As you can see on the right-hand side, uh, you can see those parking spaces there. Um, so today we have um, a proposal to demolish the existing building and construct a three, uh, 
three three-story fee simple townhomes. Uh, the units ranging from 4,194 square feet to 4,177 4, square feet. Um, a brief overview of the project includes common living areas, an oversized one-car garage, and swimming pool at the ground level. On the second story, there are three bedrooms, a lounge area, and a corner balcony. On the third story is the fourth bedroom, a game and an exercise rooms, and a green rooftop terrace. And the architectural uh, is a uh, masonry modern style. Um, the proposed height is measured from the base building elevation to the highest finished uh, roof surface at 33 feet and 8 inches. The height to the parapet is 36 feet, 8 inches, and to the top of the mechanical screening is 38 feet. Within the RM zoning district, the maximum height is 35 feet with a height exception of four roof screening to allow an additional four feet. In this case, the height is in compliance with the land development code. Um, the, the proposal has a density of 8.3 dwelling units per acre. Parking spaces are provided on site with driveway access on Venetian Drive, one car in the garage, and two spaces on the driveway. The parking regulations require a total of eight spaces, and a total of nine spaces are provided, three spaces for each townhome. Uh, because the property is on a corner lot, it is considered a double frontage. Therefore, a limited access easement is proposed along Casarina Road to establish Venetian, Venetian Drive as the front. So you can see on the, the picture right there, Venetian Drive has the three driveways, and then Casarina does not have a driveway, and that's where the limit access is proposed. So um, no access can be on a Casarina Road, and the frontage is therefore Venetian Drive. Um, in addition, the proposal includes an extension of the sidewalk along Venetian Drive with shade trees along the right-of-ways and therefore a landscape maintenance easement will be uh, required as part of the proposal. Uh, the property also consists of retention walls and privacy walls and an access easement along the rear of the property for maintenance purposes. In addition with the class 5 application there is an inter internal adjustment uh, requested for the interior pool setbacks. This is a type of relief that is considered during the site plan uh, review process and does not affect the perimeter of an overall development proposal and may be granted by this board. So we go into the required findings with the class 5 site plan. The required findings found in section 3.1.1 must be met. As it relates to the land use, the medium density is the preferred designation for the RM zoning district permitting multifamily residential at five to 12 units per acre. As mentioned, the proposal has a density of 8.3 dwelling units per acre. In regards to criteria B, B, the development is consistent with the concurrency as it relates to portable water and sewer and solid waste. The development will provide an internal drainage system. Considering the existing development versus the proposed development, the traffic statement indicates that the development will generate less trips Therefore, it meets the Palm Beach County traffic performance standards. And the subject property was constructed prior to 1982 and therefore did not receive credit towards the parks and open space. So the park impact fee will be required at the time of building permit. In addition, the SCAD form finds showing that there will be no negative impact to the school district. Moving on to consistency with the LDRs and the comprehensive plan. The proposed development generally meets the standards and overall no concerns have been identified related to section 3.2.2. The development is also consistent with the Delray Always Comprehensive Plan, particularly the policies from the neighborhood districts and quarter element, which speaks to the wide range of housing types and compatibility with adjacent land uses. In criteria D, it requires compliance with the LDR regulations such as height, setbacks, open space, and parking. The LDRs require 25 foot setback for the first two stories and additional 30 foot setback for the third story, which the development provides. Overall, the development is in compliance with the land development standards for the RM zoning district. As mentioned, the property is uh, proposing a max density at 8.3 dwelling units per acre. 
in order to increase the project density beyond six units per acre, the approving body must make a positive finding listed in section 4.4.6i for criteria A, the development is improving the parking situation by eliminating the parking along the right of way and locating the parking on site and directing access only on Venetian Drive, reducing additional, reducing additional points of conflict if the additional driveways were proposed on Casarina Road. For criteria B, the building design provides relief through setbacks while boxed in balconies add, add mass. The proposed landscaping around the perimeter of the property provides the feeling of open space. And for criteria D, the overall modern design provides interest through varied finishes and each unit is distinguished while maintaining harmonious aesthetics. And for criteria D, uh, the proposed four bedroom and varied square footage provides options as and criteria F, uh, F as pro mentioned earlier, the development exceeds the minimum open space requirements and will provide lush landscaping through the uh, perimeter of the development. Criteria G, uh, G, the continuation of the existing sidewalk, sidewalk on Venetian Drive provides pedestrian activity to the neighboring properties. In general, the development meets the performance standards listed in section 4.46i. In addition, uh, in consideration of the proposed townhome development, such use may be established only in compliance with these special requirements listed in section 4.4, uh, uh, sorry, 4.302 through 4. Overall, the development meets the standards and a plat has been submitted in conjunction with the class five site, uh, site plan application. And following the criteria for compliance with the LDRs, there are two other sections of the code the development must be in compliance with. Oops. In general, the development meets the regulations. Staff would like to note that the oversized one car garage is designed uh, at 20 feet by 20 feet. The reason it's considered a one car garage is because the steps are encroaching into that 20 by 20 clear area and therefore it's not it's considered a one car garage. Uh, the development still meets the parking requirement by providing the two required spaces in front of the garage on the driveway. Um, just staff would like to note that if there's any concerns about that. Um, in addition, the proposed swimming pool meets uh, the perimeter setbacks. However, they do not meet the interior uh, setback of 10 feet. The applicant is requesting an internal adjustment to allow a setback of 7.1 feet for all three swimming pools. As far as other requirements of the LDR, staff wanted to note for the record these specific sections to the board because the importance of having a true two-car garage was not feasible with the encroachment of the stairs, however, still meets the parking requirement, and to mention the internal adjustment for the swimming pools. Moving on to the internal adjustment, uh, the proven body must find that such relief does not diminish the practical application of the affected regulation, and that by granting that such relief, a superior development product will result. The request relief for uh, the request is the relief for 2.9 feet into the required 10 foot set interior side setback. Um, for clarification, the report stated the request is for 7.1, but it's, however, it's the 2.9 feet and it would just be setback 7.1. So just to make that clarification. Uh, so it would be a resulting of a 7.1 uh, side interior side setback. And as shown in the graphic, uh, there's still ample room between the interior lot line and the proposed swimming pools. Uh, swim pools in such uh, proximity to the privacy walls between um, attached single family residents is a common design feature given the limited property area and overall layout and design of the development. While not intending to set a precedent uh, as each request must be considered on its own merit, several similar development projects have been approved with a zero to five foot setbacks for swim pools and the interior lot lines. Moving on to the landscape plan, the board will make certain findings with respect to the site's landscaping, including the objectives of land, uh, landscaping regulations and design standards. Uh, a tree disposition plan was provided and has been determined in compliance. 
uh, street trees are located within the right, right of way and a landscape maintenance agreement will be required. Regarding the architectural elevations, a complete analysis is provided in the staff report on page eight and nine. The architectural style is deemed masonry modern with a smooth stucco finish and carved openings creating balconies and terraces. The accented wood elements and metal railings are used to soften the stark modern forms of the building mass. Um, and the color scheme consists of neutral tones with dark colors accenting the carved spaces. And when reviewing the elevations, the board should consider whether the design is appropriate and in conformity with good taste and harmonious with the general area um, and whether the development meets the LDRs in the comprehensive plan. Based on the staff analysis, the elevations deemed to meet the minimum standards. And these are your optional board um, actions. Just note that this um, does include the internal adjustment for the swimming pools. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, is there anyone in the public that would like to speak on this item? Okay, seeing none. Um, Mr. Carney, did you have any rebuttal to staff's presentation? No, we do not. Same to staff? Any rebuttal? No? Okay, to the board. Would you like to start, Slinda? Sure. Um, I, uh, I like that it's um, not the flat that we've been seeing a lot of and that you've made a differentiation between the different units. Um, I have a couple questions though. One of them is how high is the wall between the pools where you want the setback? So six feet. Six. Six feet. That would be six feet. Okay. And then my next question is, and looking at the picture where it showed with the blue windows, one of the last pictures up there, it's in our uh, staff report. Um, keep going. <laughs> That one, yes. Okay, so on the top of the third floor, that's just like a uh, privacy wall for the equipment and things like that. There's no one that would be up on that area? Okay. No, ma'am. And then how do you um, divide the, um, you know, you've got the grills and all that on the third floor. How are, is, are there walls or something? There are, there are walls. Yeah. There are walls dividing each individual unit. Mm -hmm. uh, you may be able to see that on the, on the floor plan. Uh, a little clearer where the walls are. Okay, on the third floor. That is correct. Okay. And then um, my only other comment is um, we have a lot of this style architecture going into our area, and there's that one right across the street, uh, with the cladding being either sort of a brownish, beigeish, or in the grayish family. And if I was wondering if there was anything that could make this one have a little more personality, um, a different color, a different texture on some of that cladding, just because you have on um, casual and you have the ones that you built that are facing south, and then you have the new one, and then across the street, there's that one, which it does have like lighting and things that make it a little different, but just to give it a little more interest, because we're, I feel, as an opinion, that we're running into a lot of the same look of the buildings all over. And it is, it is a very nice building, and I'd like to just see a little more. Thank, thank you. Uh, yes, and, and this is the reason that we, we introduced uh, a, a little bit more of a contrast for the colors for the, uh, if you may call them cubes. Um, we've, we've gone to a little darker um, color in order for us to, I, I think somebody mentioned that, um, you see a lot of grays uh, throughout, and, and we've stayed away from those grays. And uh, that's the reason that we started going with a little bit more earth tones, a little bit more browns. Um, and and, and that's, that's what we're trying to uh, provide in this, in this uh, piece of architecture. Yeah, and not arguing, but the building right across the street has that exact same color. The, br the, br the browns. <laughs> so um, that's why I'm saying if it was, I don't know what, you're the architect, but you could come up with a, something that was, I don't know. We could definitely explore a few, uh, a few different finishes. Absolutely, we, we'd be open to that. Yeah, just to give it its own personality, because I, I don't want to see that area just become like one long. Of, of course, you know. of course. We, we agree with that. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Steven? Yes, uh, so we're looking at the 
pool relief, the setback. And uh, that's, so normally it's 10 feet, but you, you propose 7.3 or something like that. 7.1. Is that? And that, that setback is where exactly are you encroaching where that red line is? No, it's, it's uh, basically you're pro we're providing a new property line in between units. And you can see the uh, dash dot. So that will become the property line between each individual unit. Uh, so uh, they, they're, they're pretty much just encroaching into, into that setback to that property line. Um, oh. It's just en enough to where the other side has a little bit more nice. landscape and uh, obviously a, a small uh, pool terrace as well. Uh, the, uh, obviously, the pools are not that big, um, but it's still just just sufficient uh, for for that to become the amenity for for the unit. If you see the space okay. where it says the pool equipment, that there's a, yeah. that's the wall. Yeah, I see so that. That's the six foot wall, and it's yeah, the, same the, on the other side of that, that unit yellow. as well. Yes, I see that. Okay, so we're looking at that. What else are you asking for? Is that is that it? That's much? yeah. For the things that um, the, the, we required that did not meet, technically meet the code. Yeah. It was uh, it was we needed the internal adjustment, but as again, it's only for the interior setbacks, and it's right. all behind walls, and it really only affects the three properties that are asking for I it. I got you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You beat me to the question. So um, I think that it's okay with me that the pools, how they are, you still have a safety, you still have room. It's just merely, I hope the neighbors get along <laughs> since they're a little bit closer. <laughs> but other than that, great project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, just a clarification for me. I'm not envisioning the barbecue area. Um, is that on the roof? The rooftop? Uh, th there, is, there is a uh, barbecue area uh, at this level as well. It's at the pool level? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And that is not on the roof. What's on the roof is the equipment. No, th there is another barbecue there as well. Um, we, we have the option of having the, the rooftop uh, barbecue, but we also have one here, which is uh, next to the, um, uh, by the pools. Um, they're, they're shown on the site plan, um, probably in the floor plan. We, we, would, we would be able to see a little bit more detail of where the barbecue is. It, can, can we go to the first floor? I'm sorry, Alexia. Uh, are we able to zoom in a little bit? Yeah, so we do have a barbecue. Uh, for example, on this unit would be on the right-hand side right there. That is the barbecue. And that is the uh, the closest proximity to the uh, to the pool. Uh, each individual unit has a a so-called summer kitchen uh, nearby. Unfortunately, it, it they're not all covered. I believe maybe Unit B has it has it covered. Um, if you if you're able to scroll to the to the Unit B, Alexia. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, yes, uh, unit unit B would have would have it covered. So that is your barbecue summer kitchen for for that particular unit. Unit A also has it on the on the uh, side, uh, which unfortunately is not covered. But um, uh, they they all have them have the options for that. So my question to staff then is, what is the potential impact to the surrounding neighbors? of having that barbecue, particularly the uncovered uh, units. Is there any potential adverse impact? Okay, and the engineer does development services director. I, I mean, I think if it's a question of whether what you're looking at is just a reasonable use of somebody's backyard. There were five units on the site before. There are three now. They're located, um, I, I believe, appropriately within the, the setbacks. And so if it's something that you generally would allow someone to have in their backyard, then, it, then it's fine. Um, just while we're talking, too, I do think um, 
what starts to happen on in the beach area sometimes is the requirements of lifting the finished floor and re response to FEMA and things like that. And so we'll have to look at the deck in terms of how the, the, the wall that encloses everything and it meets the street and transitions and things like that, that, that can get a little detailed at building permit. But outside of those strange idiosyncrasies related to the elevation requirements building there, the actual barbecue itself, it, I don't see an issue with. It's, it's common in backyards, so. It is common in backyards, yeah. but my, my thought is, you know, it's higher, noise goes high. How many people can potentially fit up there and you're talking about the one that is not on the ground this right is what i thought she no, 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 <laughs> so right. let's go yeah. to the um the upper level terrace because we we limit the terraces to the top of the second story now instead of continuing onward um and so those are And so again, it's if it's something that uh, you can achieve outside, you know, noise is a, is a, is an interesting. It's its own science. What bounces around in one one place doesn't bounce around with the exact design somewhere else. And so we are really careful about noise. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes it looks great on paper and then it comes out of the ground and we find out that somebody's hearing an echo from something further away and then we ha we work with the owners to address it if that happens the use of what is on the rooftop now does have landscape requirements and all of that is an effort to ensure privacy for both this unit but also the adjoining neighbors and also intended to just try to provide some sort of natural ability for muting but I would, I would defer to you on any experience you have with building decks and barbecues and whether you've had problems with previous projects. Well, um, so we, we've never encountered uh, or uh, have ever um, had any issues with uh, any potential buyers or clients on the use of these terraces. Um, so, it's, it's actually very, very attractive to 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 the buyers. I mean, it it, it becomes a, a sort of a a, a point of of, uh, of of being of using your third floor. Um, I, I'm not I'm not quite sure whether that becomes a noise uh, problem. Obviously, it, it does become a, a gathering. Absolutely, it's, it, it is a gathering. Uh, obviously, we also have the game room game and club room that as a de uh, destination for the third floor um, I I don't know what what we could do um, uh, otherwise I mean it's still a gathering whether we have a barbecue or not so uh, I think what I'm looking for clarification mm -hmm. is kind of the potential uh, number is this you know family of four and five others is it what's the capacity because the capacity then dictates the potential for adverse impact right so you, you, sometimes you're in the city and you see a deck with a barbecue but it's really just functional for you to have an outspace cooking area and then bring it inside um, and have the barbecue experience mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but this is very different because you have the barbecue of the game room so my, what I'm trying to envision is there 20 people up there? Is it 10 people up there per unit? What does that? What do you envision that looks looks like? Because then I can decide for myself, um, you know, what some of the potential impacts could be. Well, I I, I don't know whether we necessarily have ever um, depicted a number of of how many people can, could gather up there. Obviously, the, these are family oriented units. What's the um, size? The size of the terrace is 23 feet wide by 60 feet. Okay, so I'm envision like three 10 by 10 tents. Yeah, um, I mean, this. 
I mean, this is something that that we've been doing quite a bit, and obviously the adjoining property also has this, so this is not something that is new. So I don't know whether the city has ever heard any anything as far as um, any issues with that. Um, it, like I said, it's not the first project that has this amenity. Um, I've never heard anything negative um, from anyone before. Um, definitely a, a good concern to have, but I, I don't know whether the city has ever heard of anything else besides. Okay. Thanks for your patience and thanks for trying to answer my <laughs> questions the best of your ability. So the, the, these these garages on these terraces now are becoming more and more common in many of the many of the developments. And remember, when you talk about the square footage of the of the of the of the roof the, the terrace there there's really only so much of it that's going to be usable because then there's also portions that you can't do that you have to have as you know open space and green space and things such as that which is as, as depicted on the uh on the rendering so no i i can appreciate that but we're living we live in a culture and it's a very changing culture where people are now getting you know shot for knocking on the wrong door uh, so because we, we've done it in the past and there's no issues in the past, doesn't mean that we don't have the responsibility not to compound and or look at economic development climates of what's going on culturally, be responsible as we go forward, right? Yep. So ask and answer, thank you. It is a concern, it's not a suede, but that's where we are. Um, are there any other board comments? Thank you so much, yeah. appreciate you. <clears throat> Okay, so I'll entertain a motion. Uh, uh, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. uh, move approval of the class five 2022 2-273 site plan, lights, landscape plan, and architectural elevations for 1001 Calcerina Road by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. So point of, do we need to include the do we? Can you do a second first and then oh, we can okay. discuss it. Okay. Second. So point of order. Do we need to include in the motion the request for the polls? Yeah. Yeah. Approving the internal adjustment would be an excellent addition. If, thank you. So how do we do that? Uh, if you just say uh, amend it to include the approval of the internal adjustment for the pools, or you can just say uh, so amended. So amended. Second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Dana Adler, Benjamin Baffert, and Carol Perez are absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdo? Yes. Nick Ray? Yes. It passes majority. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That moves us to agenda item C, the Linton 2023-047. Mr. Gadnick, I am butchering your name, is that correct? Gadanik. Okay, if you could enter that into the records for us, please. Good evening, board members. Julie Gadanik, senior planner. Uh, to enter into the record file number 2023-047. It is a class five site plan application uh, for the project known as the Linton, and I will turn it over to the uh, representatives. And before the applicant start, is there any ex parte uh, communication for disclosure? No. None on my part. Good evening, everyone. Jordana Jarjuro with Men in Development, 101 Southeast 4th Avenue. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Linton project. Before I begin, I just want to enter into the record the bios and CV of my whole team who's here to answer any questions you guys might have. Um, the narrative submitted on December 12, 2022, four rounds of TAC response letters dated February 3rd, 2023, February 22nd, 2023, March 10th, and March 28th, respectively. Tonight's presentation, an email dated March 10th, 2023 from, the fire, from Fire Marshal Franco regarding concurrency and a red line of the city staff report noting our objections that I've discussed with the city attorney as well as um, our principal planner on this, which I'll discuss further in the presentation. There you go. Thank you. 
And while they're finding it, um, my presentation is going to seem daunting at 50 slides, but it's really just for the record, and I'm going to be speeding through a lot of them and just returning to them if you all have questions. Do you have a keyboard up there? This thing? Does that, it's a PDF format, so just see if that works to change the slides. Get it to shift full monitor. Full monitor, for some reason. Okay. I hate that thing, but let's see if it'll work. Okay, this is going to be your easiest option to move through easily. Okay. That doesn't work. It won't go to full screen. <laughs> Um, so the project's called the Linton, and we're before you for a Class 5 site plan approval. Um, my team is made up of men in development. IBI is our architect. Architectural Alliance Landscape is our landscape architect. Dynamic handled all of our engineering and concurrency and traffic. And we decided to partner with the Richmond Group, who has vast multifamily experience. Um, they've done northwards in their 25-year history of 167,000 units, including affordable and workforce, which this project has a component of that, and over $28 billion worth of multifamily development. And they're all here tonight to answer any specific questions you guys have. In terms of background, we originally, um, the City Commission approved the o Always Delray Plan in 2020, which emphasized the housing shortage that we have here in Delray and made recommendations to address. Consistent with the Always Delray 2020 comp plan, on January 19th, 2021, the City Commission voted unanimously to approve an LDR tax amendment to create the Linton Commons Overlay District and three conditional use approvals. The three conditional use approvals increased our density from 12 units to 30 units per acre, our height from 45 feet to 60 feet, and permitted a freestanding multifamily building. Consistent with those approvals, we're now before you for a class five site plan approval. In terms of location, um, it's on Linton. It's about, it's centrally located. It's about half a mile from the beach, three quarters of a mile from I-95, and half a mile to US-1. It's right, this plaza is adjacent to the Whole Foods. It's next to a plethora of neighborhood retail stores, half a mile east of the properties Trader Joe's, Publix, Fresh Market. To the southeast is a 32-acre park and 11.64-acre cons conservation area. There are several hospitals, as well as FAU and Lynn, within a six to seven mile drive of the property and the tri-rail station is roughly two miles from the property and the um, Boca Raton Brightline station is 4.7 miles from the property so we find it's very centrally located. Um, as you guys know there hasn't been any new multifamily development on Linton. The most recent one is at the Franklin which is on Federal and Linton. It's very saturated with commercial and as the comp plan talked about utilizing um, underutilizing shopping centers to help deal with the housing shortage that we have. Delray's 98% built out, and we, in order to f deal with the housing shortage that we have, we have to reimagine and redevelop underutilized sites. So this is an aerial view of the property. We are going to keep the existing commercial on the front, it's Chipotle, AT&T, PNC Bank. The area that we're planning to redevelop is the rare portion. It's parcel A. It um, formerly was a sports authority and then an orchard. It currently has PetSmart and Guitar Center in there, and the vacant bay is where um, Orchard went when it went bankrupt. This shows you the three parcels that make up the um, Linton Commons overlay. Parcels B and C are the commercial, and parcel A will be the proposed redevelopment. So in terms of the site plan, um, this is the ground floor plan, and of course it has all the bells and whistles that you would expect from a multifamily development. What was important to us as well as to Richmond is to really have a, 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 a lo immense amount of amenities that really cater to those that want to live in a multifamily development. It has a greenway path around all four sides. Um, it has a bike storage, both interior as well as excess bike storage on the, surf on the lots. It has multiple green spaces pocket park areas, it has pickleball courts, it has a dog park, it has a dog spa slash dog washing area for the, for the tenants. Um, in the post Amazon world, it has a oversized package storage room for the, for, the, um, for the residents. It has an oversized gym, it has a lobby. Um, basically all the amenities you would expect in um, the 2023 multifamily developments. This is the second floor where the clubhouse is located over the gym. This is the third floor, which has a open area terrace, which is over the gym and the clubhouse on the first and second floors. Level four, level five, we drop down on level five, which is closest to the, on the south end, which is closest to the residential area to the south. 
and this is the roof plan. So in terms of um, the code, we meet or exceed all code requirements. We received a conditional use approval I mentioned earlier for a maximum height of 60 feet. Um, we, we elected not to maximize the allowable 60 feet for the entire length of the building and the structure where the habitable area is to 52 feet. In terms of setbacks for the proposed residential structure, the required front setback is 10 feet and the building has a 45 foot front setback. For side and rear, the required setback is 10 feet and we respectively have a 20, roughly 20 feet setback on the west side, 20 feet setback on the east side and a 25 foot setback on the rear side. In terms of parking, um, the three um, existing, the three commercial, pro the existing commercial coupled with the proposed multifamily requires 655 parking spaces. We are proposing 735 parking spaces. We parked it as each standalone parcel, even though it's considered one site plan. So we have a surplus of 80 parking spaces. Important to note, if we had calculated it under a shared parking, we'd have even a larger surplus, but I think 80 parking space surplus is, is, is pretty impressive. Um, in utilizing the overall site. Open space required 25%, we're closer to 30%, the existing site is at 20%. The FAR max is 3.0 and we're at 1.34. For lot coverage, the code permits 40% and we are at 29%. In order for you to approve our project, you must make a certain number of required findings consistent with the LDRs as articulated in your staff report, which I'm gonna quickly go through. Um, in terms of the land use map, we are in conformity with the requirements of the land use map and all applicable use and intensity limitations. In terms of concurrency, we meet concurrency for all areas. The one I did want to mention is school. Um, the school board has requested, as noted in your staff report, a voluntary um, contribution in addition to our impact fees um, of 70, roughly $70,000 in order to um, address capacity at Boca Raton High School. We will be paying all of our required impact fees. We will not be paying a voluntary payment to a non-Delray school. So I just wanted to note that because that was noted in your staff report. Again, we comply with all LDRs or exceed. In terms of consistency, the project development meets the applicable standards. There's no, as noted in your staff report, there's no identified areas of concern with regards to impacts from the overall site configuration and building design on the surrounding area. I did wanted to pull out some um, ones that were highlighted in your staff report. This is a plan that shows our pedestrian and bike connectivity. Much effort was put into um, the pedestrian and bike connectivity, not only for the commercial properties connecting the residential to the commercial properties in the frontage as a true mixed use prop project, but also the neighboring and adjacent properties. We envision our residents eating at the uh, at the restaurants in you know whether it's chipotle on our property or next door at the whole foods property and walking and biking to whole foods so in order for to effectuate that or going to the park to the south in order to effectuate that we really emphasized having a four-sided greenways path um, sidewalks on all three sides um, connectivity and the the you know in terms of the the dog park the bike racks all and all covered by shade trees in order for it to be a attractive, walkable, bikeable, um, mixed use development. I talked about the ample bike storage that we're providing. We are providing interior bike storage for 600, 685 square foot bike storage, which holds roughly 36 bicycles. Additionally, 25 bicycle spaces throughout the development. The code requires 14, so we have a surplus of 47 bike spaces. We have two pickleball courts to the south which again is something that is, is on trend with what um, you know people like. I don't play pickleball, but it, it's, it's supposed to be really huge right now, and Richmond insisted on, on that. Um, again, all of this is to promote a multimodal, healthy lifestyle, something that is also talked about much, uh, over and over in the comp plan. This quickly is just is to again touch upon the lot coverage in FAR. Again, the code is 3.0, we're at 1.34, 40%, we're at 29%. The, so we're surrounded by commercial on Linton Boulevard. To the south is a residential neighborhood. One of the issues that came up during the, the TAC review comments is what does the residential neighborhood to the south look at? Um, and so Melissa was very excited when I sent her to um, go stand adjacent to the closest residential unit 
and take a photo. And I think um, she got yelled at because she was on someone's private property. But this is the view from that photo. It's 278 feet away. You could see the building to the north. Um, because of the amount of existing shade trees plus the shade trees we're adding, you just see the peaks of the five-story building. Um, it's separated by a road and a surface parking lot. And the bottom is the photo, which it looks like a rendering, but it's actually a photo that Melissa took. And the top is the rendering showing our development dropped in. This is they, the southern portion. So this is it up close so that you could see it. And this is the southwest side up close so you could see it. So that's the road I was talking about that separates before the um, residential to the south. In terms of consistency, um, the proposed application, as noted in your staff report, is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan, particularly those of the neighborhood districts and corridors element. So I am going to probably scare you with the next slides, but I'm just going to zip through them. These are just all of the different policies, objectives, and goals that I could find, and I think we could probably find a lot more, but Melissa was about to kill me with how many times, how many things I was putting in this presentation. So here's, in terms of the landscape plan, I'm sorry that Carol Perez is in here because I know that um, she's the uh, most vocal one on the board in terms of landscape, but um, Manny is here to um, answer any questions that you guys have. The, um, we meet um, and comply with all applicable regu regu regulations. This shows the different areas of landscaping and the different types of landscaping. This shows all the different trees, um, our tree canopy, again, to provide the shading, the ample shading, and the sense of arrival to distinguish between the commercial properties and the residential. This is a close-up of the entranceway, entryway to the development. We're adding pavers to, again, give a sense of arrival and distinguish between the commercial and the residential. In terms of architectural elevations and aesthetics, um, this is not in the CBD, it's in the PC zoning district, so there's not a prescribed, um, seven prescribed architectural styles. That being said, we decided to follow the CBD guideline, design guidelines for um, architectural style, and we decided, because I think this board has expressed itself more than once that they um, are sick of seeing masonry modern. Um, Linton is a little different. Um, it's not like the downtown, so it hasn't had the uptake in, in modern and contemporary development that the downtown has heard, has gone. So we decided, in terms of architectural style, to go with Florida vernacular. What the board is not going to be happy with is that it is an all-white building, which you'll see from the renderings. Um, we think set, it, it's, although this board has spoken consistently, and I know Dana's not here, but the whiting and graying of Delray, we think in order to really set this building apart and um, give it that and consistent with the Florida vernacular style, the white juxtaposition with the color commercial buildings in the front is, is to us, reads well. And we're hoping that the board doesn't uh, um, hold us our feet to the fire for the color choice. So this is the um, height. I wanted to touch upon this quickly because um, we, for our architectural style have peaked roofs and the board has the purview to allow us to go higher than our maximum height for architectural features. And so pursuant to LDR section 4.3.4, the maximum height of architectural features in non-residential zoning districts is allowed to extend vertically up to 20% of the height of the building subject to SPRAB approval. So we are requesting to go up to 68.4 feet for certain architectural features. We're allowed to go to 72 feet um, for these architectural features. And this is for the peaked sloped roofs, which is common in the Florida vernacular style. And you could see this on our elevations, but you'll see it more clearly on the renderings. So this is a view of the building from Linton Boulevard. Again, you see the sense of arrival. We tried to do it with the pavers, the sidewalk, the landscaping. Um, the two commercial parcels will be in the front and the residential behind. This is a close up. You see the motor cord, um, the entrance to the project. And here you can start to see some of the articulation with the Florida vernacular style. So this is the east side fronting 4th Avenue. This is that one of those pocket parks I talked about, the green space. 
This is the southeast corner from 4th Avenue. This is the southwest corner from Lavers. And again, this is the view from the closest residential unit to the south. So before I make our request for a motion to approve, I did want to go over some of the comments that we had with the um, staff report. Um, it's more it's more legalese, which I've spoken to the city attorney's office about. In some notations, it's called it's um, the staff report refers to it as affordable. It's workforce housing units. That's what our um, approval was for for the text amendment. So uh, affordable and workforce means different things in different areas of government. So we wanted to be clear that it's consistent with the tech with the code. It's workforce housing. Um, sometimes um, it was said family instead of workforce housing. So was, so we struck the family. Um, across all unit sizes, um, that's not part of our um, common, our overlay. Ours is workforce housing, equal distribution at very low, low and moderate income levels. There was also a notation about wood siding. We are doing a wood looking type siding, but for maintenance and cost, we can't do real wood in, in Florida for, for a multifamily commercial building. For the school um, comment, I added um, the Boca Raton High School because that's what they're asking for that voluntary $70,000 payment in addition to our impact fees that we're not contributing to or we're objecting to contributing to. And then um, on page five, that we added studio because we do have studios. We have studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms. And then we struck the last line on page five that required a proportionate amount of each unit type because again, that's inconsistent with our text amendment. And then my last edit is on the last page, fire department concurrency. That's what I entered into the record. We have a, um, an email from the fire marshal saying that we don't um, require a concurrency review. And with that, I respectfully request um, a motion to approve our class five and would happy to answer any questions you guys have or anyone from our team. Thank you so much. And your Mr. Gidani, if you'll present for the city. Yes. Good evening again, board members, Julian Gadanek, senior planner. Um, for you this time is a uh, class five site application for the property uh, at 500, 510, and 520 West Linton Boulevard, known as the Linton. The applicant just gave a very detailed and thorough presentation, so I'll, I'll try to move through this briefly and not be redundant with information, but just want to introduce the property. It's a little over nine acres. Uh, it's currently used used as commercial, uh, land use is general commercial, GC, the zoning district is planned commercial. This is an aerial view of the property. So surrounding properties for context to the north, uh, across the street, there is a uh, commercial development with uh, single story retail. Uh, to the west is the, the newer Whole Foods uh, that was built recently. Um, to the east is uh, industrial zoning, and to the south is the uh, multifamily residential that the applicant referenced. This is the subject property. Uh, again, as referenced, there are two uh, commercial buildings in the front of the property uh, oriented closer to Linton that will uh, remain, and then the uh, building in the rear is what's to be demolished and replaced with the multifamily project. Uh, this is the subject property from the, the west side showing the building that's to be removed. So the request before you is a class five, including uh, landscape plans, architectural elevations, um, and uh, preliminary civil plans for a 277 unit multifamily residential development. Um, again, located at the corner of Lynn Boulevard and Southwest Fourth Avenue. So a bit of background, again, that can touched on this, but there have been three conditional uses previously approved by the City Commission relating to this project. Uh, one is to allow for freestanding multifamily as a use in the PC district. Um, the other is to allow a maximum building height of 60 feet. Uh, and then the third is to allow an increased density of up to 30 dwelling units per acre uh, in exchange for 20% uh, family workforce housing units. Again, the family slash workforce is just how the section is categorized in our code. 
there is a Scribner's error on this presentation and the uh, staff report I referenced LDR section 447, it's actually 47. So there's no middle four, just a clarification. So looking at the site plan, it's comprised of three parcels that are part of the same um, plat. It's parcel A, parcel B, and parcel C. Uh, parcel A is where the majority of these improvements take place. That's where the residential uh, building is being located. There are some improvements on parcel B and parcel C that are related to uh, modifications to the vehicular use area, traffic circulation, and then pedestrian sidewalks. But the vast majority of the improvements are parcel A. This is being considered a unified development, though, because parcel B and C, the gross square footage and area of those parcels, is being utilized to achieve the density that the applicant is proposing for parcel A. Uh, so that's just to break down uh, sort of the land configuration. So going over some site data, again, 277 units proposed. That's just a hair under 30 dwelling units an acre, which is the maximum allowed per the approved conditional use. The height, uh, 60 feet and five stories uh, is proposed. 60 feet um, is approved by the conditional use. As the applicant mentioned, that is to the mean height of the, peak of the pitched roofs, and then they are proposing some design elements and tower elements that encroach above that. They're allowed to do that as long as the um, SPRAB board consents to that. Um, open space provided is 28%. Their minimum is 25, so they meet that. There is a surplus of parking. That parking is interspersed between a new parking garage that's integrated into the residential building as well as the surface parking and new on-street parking that's being provided on the site. Um, so again, correct the record, the bedroom mix is studios, one, two, and three bedrooms, and then uh, affordable or workforce housing. Uh, I use those terms interchangeably, but the applicant was right to clarify that, uh, is 20% of the total units. So looking at the site plan, uh, focusing on, on the new residential component, um, there is a lot of pedestrian circulation and, and green space integrated throughout the site, which is appreciated, some pocket parks, as the applicant uh, pointed to. Um, there are commercial um, you know, uses in very close proximity to this area, so it is uh, important to provide uh, residents an opportunity to walk to Whole Foods, and especially if it's shaded, uh, that makes their decision a little bit more easier if they decide to do that. So. We like to see that. There is also a vast array of, of amenities provided from a recreation standpoint as well as just a functionality standpoint. The mailroom size, et cetera, um, it's, a, it's a fully programmed residential project. Again, looking at the landscape plan, uh, this is the whole site. Uh, there's a lot of greenery interspersed throughout the site, shade trees. Uh, around the perimeter as well as in the parking. M the parcel B and C, if the existing site, uh, landscape is compliant with code, then they don't necessarily need to make any changes, but they have revised the plans to show that if there's any area that's of not compliance, they would bring that into compliance with the current code. And that's in regard to like, shade trees and, and parking islands or, or hedges and things of that sort. Uh, but overall, it's a well landscape plan. Looking at the design, as the applicant referenced, it is a Florida vernacular architecture. Um, some prominent elements of that architecture that, uh, that are present here are gabled roofs uh, with overhangs, horizontal wood siding as an exterior material, in this case a faux wood material, uh, vertically proportioned windows, frequent integration of porches and balconies across the facades, and a solidi solidified uh, base. Uh, these are some renderings from the South perspective, which is what the residential uh, abuts, the arrows kind of illustrate where these viewpoints are coming from. And then these are the elevations from uh, each side of the building. As you can see, there is a lot of movement across the facade, a lot of design treatment, uh, different tower elements, etc. And then these are the materials proposed. Uh, it's stucco, the faux wood siding, um, metal roof, uh, and the green wall along the garage. So there are required findings that you need to consider as part of this application. Uh, for, in terms of architecture, you would go by the criteria in uh, section 4618. Generally, that states that the design should be deemed to be in good taste, uh, not detrimental to the uh, surrounding area, et cetera. 
and then required findings for the site plan application, um, <coughs> consistency uh, with the land use map, concurrency review, consistency with the comprehensive plan, and compliance with the LDRs. Each of these sections has been elaborated upon in the staff report. And then with that, your board options moving forward are to move approval, move denial, or to continue with direction. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the public that has wishes to speak on this particular agenda item? Please state your name and address for the record. Alice Fence, 707 Place Tavon, Delray Beach, 33445. Speak into the microphone, Ms. Finch. Thank you. Well, it's fastened down. So. No worries. <laughs> Close enough. Um, well, we've been here close to 50 years, and this is just overwhelming. It's, it, is this the last parcel in the whole city that can be developed, or can we, if you approve this one, can we see others popping up in other neighborhoods? Got to look at this. Um, and when you look at the foliage around it, the height just seems to be too much. I don't know if we've had other buildings in town that will provide the same kind of cluster as these large buildings are, but. I think you need to look at this very carefully because this will be here longer than we will. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have any rebuttals, Ms. Um, Just the rebuttals that I noted in the staff report the same apply for the staff presentation okay same to staff uh, no rebuttals from me yeah, I just would like to clarify for the record in terms of the distribution of units and the article 4.7 of the LDR the section that defines the Linton overlay district in the first section and then the rules um, for um, the provision of workforce housing is titled the family slash workforce housing. So it was certainly not meant to change up the requirement. The applicant um, had come forward. I think it was one of uh, the first, you know, developers that really committed to trying to commit to a range beyond just the moderate level, and they should be commended for that. Um, the the specific regulations within the uh, provisions of the different unit types and all of that. Um, are in uh, that section and I do want to just point out for the record that the definition the defining uh, criteria for the Linton Commons overlay district in section E um, includes that all sections of article 4.7 apply to the Linton Commons overlay district except for sections 474 and 4711 so as we move forward into constructing hopefully um, this project um, that would be the way that the workforce housing is um, executed but again um, instead of doing 120 ami at the highest possible family level they, they did come forward offering the other income levels as well and that's to be commended as well yeah, so, thanks, thank for, thanks for pointing that out okay so we even you, okay um, yes oh this is a big project that's for sure so uh, you know, this I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy to see Florida vernacular come up. That's, that's good. Um, what, so some of the treatments, uh, the pitched roofs, what, what are the horizontal uh, pseudo wood? I don't see that anywhere, those, those elements. Uh, yeah, I'll let the architect speak more on the okay. materials. Is our philosophy from IBI group? Uh, so the wood siding is essentially, uh, if it's, it's um, well, it's shown on the elevation. If we can zoom in, we can see the 
horizontal lines. Uh, especially I, I on the camera. I can't more than that. <laughs> I don't see any. Uh, yeah. Well, the entire base of the building is is out of uh, is with the wood treatment. Okay. And the top is a stucco. All right. Yeah, it's the resolution. Yeah. Where, so where where is it? Where, where, I mean, I, I, I see a lot of flat. Just. So so the, wherever you see those lines, the uh, horizontal lines and the uh, vertical, these are um, the wood treatment. Okay. A black wall is a black wall is essentially the stucco, and uh, the texture is just the uh, you know, emphasize the wood. Black black wall. Where's that? Like a blank. just a blank wall. Oh, blank. I thought you said black. Okay. So so yeah. So that that's all smooth stucco is what you're saying. Yeah. The, the white. The the. Okay. Uh, are those vertical treatments at the on the gables, the peaks? That also would. Yeah. Okay. Because in general, I, it, I I mean, I would like to see a little bit more detail on the on the facade and maybe. I know you, you made a decision to go with that kind of off-white, mm -hmm. but I think a little bit more color might, just here and there, might, might be a good idea. But um, what about the, I don't know, the, because I'm in that area a lot and it's kind of a high traffic area. What, uh, what are the, Where where are people going to, you know, in, you know, go in and go out? Is it ingress egress? In, in, ingress, egress. Can you unzoom so I could go to the ground floor plan? So we actually have a trip reduction um, with this project. Um, it'll be lower trips in terms of traffic impact, but in terms of to answer, I'm really good at this site plan. So there's um, an entrance off of Lavers, which is on the okay. west side. There is an entrance off of Southwest Fourth on the east side, okay. and there is the primary entrance off of Linton. Right. And is there a traffic light there? I think there is. Right. Is there there's. A, I think when Whole Foods went in, they have a traffic. Well, they have well, a traffic light on there. Southwest Fourth, and I think they added a traffic light when Whole Foods went into to Lavers. And we had to do some improvements on our side, and they had to do improvements up for laborers on their side. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, I, I have nothing else to say. So. so I love this idea. I love walking around, being having choices, not always having to get into the car to go everywhere, especially like grocery shopping, and I think it's great. Um, I think it looks a little hotel-esque, if you will, which isn't a bad thing because I think it's going to blend in a little bit more in the landscaping. I don't think it's going to pop out with it being white. I think it's almost going to blend into the sky a little bit better. Um, where are you putting like the dog walking park and things like that? I couldn't see it or zoom in. My favorite thing too. Well, everybody talks about like not having a place to take their dogs. I, w I wish there was like a pointer. Um, yeah. And I'm certainly not tall enough to reach that screen over there. But it's along the south. Oh, that's perfect. That's along the south side is where the dog park is and the dog spa. The pickleball courts are right there. Oh, I can't. That is a pointer. Can we zoom back in and can Vanna White go back up, please, for me? <laughs> um, so the dog park is along the south side. Okay. The pickleball courts are right adjacent to that. Around the entire site is a greenways path so that to have the connectivity and a five-foot sidewalk along the northeast and south side. 
there's the the pocket park on along southwest fourth avenue and then there's the little green space area in the center um adjacent to the pool okay great thank you i appreciate how thorough you guys are as well because i think that that was important i think you took a lot of our questions away so i i like that i i like the additions and i think it's a great project thank you I have to say. <coughs> okay thank you so much I agree uh, with my fellow. I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't go. I'm sorry. Different world today. Go ahead. Um, I just have a couple questions. I do appreciate the um, use of the architectural style, um, rather than seeing the same thing over and over again. I don't think that the white is a problem. I think when you have the different textures, you'll notice th that. Um, my question is: is on the um, which is now the back of the shopping center. There's also going to be an entrance, exit, egress, ingress area there, or will just the ones that are existing now be? So um, there are ex Labor Circle, I believe, is the street. Yeah. So Labor's um, and Southwest Fourth, they're existing. I think we did realign to make improvements. So now the way it is right now with the shopping center, it's not lined up. So you almost like. If you're not the greatest driver, you have to like skirt versus now we're gonna line up that that paved road down the center that runs northeast, um, north south and east west are all lined up now to match where the actual points of egress and ingress are off of Linton, Southwest Fourth and Labors. Mm -hmm. I also forgot that we have two different um, loading areas and trash areas. We have an oversized one on the south side off of Southwest Fourth Avenue, adjacent to the pickleball courts so that um, that's where the you know moving trucks and um, furniture and um, trash pickup is, and then we also have a secondary one for that's smaller for for trash and loading on the west side off of labor. So we gave two, even though you know we didn't just it was more from a functional standpoint for what the residents would need to have trash rooms on either side and with the amount of packages that we all know get delivered now trash rooms have to be oversized as well too um, okay and I do think it is a mammoth project but I think it's set back far enough that if you as I live off of Linton a little further east and I go down there every day um, my uh, question is the properties that are the commercial properties where the bank is and um, Chipotle. Chipotle and the ice cream and all that um, are they owned by the same is there any possibility of you know putting a new facade on those buildings to tie them all together so it's not like those are just kind of plunked in front of it to make it more of a free-flowing um, comprehensive kind of look as you drive by so it's certainly designed to function as a mixed-use development that was one of the discussions that we had when we got the conditional use approval and the and the tax amendment that it's it's it should be looked at as a mixed use site with all three parcels in terms of the making any changes to the front parcels i actually thought because of all the comments that have been made leading up um you know by this board and the previous board in terms of the modernization of del rey um and the whiting and graying keeping it its existing architectural style and colors to juxtapose against the newer Florida vernacular and having a different architectural style. One of the reasons that I, I, I moved to Boca when I was nine and then we moved to Del Rey when I was in high school. What I loved about Del Rey is the eclectic architecture that you could have, you know, Boca, everything was Mediterranean, Addison and, and pink and cookie cutter houses. What I love about Del Rey is that you could have, you know, a tropical modern the Ray Hotel, which we own, right across from Floribian, which I didn't know was an architectural style, um, City Walk, which is where I live. Um, you could have a masonry modern one-story building adjacent to that, and then a Florida vernacular pocket, you know, um, Bankers Row houses just a street over. I, I, I think if we modernize and updated the front parcels, it almost makes it again not that it, it takes away from the eclectic feel as someone who likes everything uniformed and matching um in terms of you know f get freshing up I, I just think it goes against what we're trying to accomplish with having a different eclectic styles if you look at the cbd and how it's 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 developed i think one of the frustrations that 
And, you know, I got it wrong when I served up on the city commission and we passed these seven prescribed architectural styles with the CBD because all of a sudden all you see is Art Deco and um, Masonry Modern. So I own that mistake. Um, I think keeping true to the architectural integrity is what's most important versus having prescribed set styles. I think people were going with Art Deco and Masonry Modern because it's easier to do, it's cheaper, and... um, now we're seeing the downtown having a consistent architectural style versus eclectic architectural style. Linton is ripe for redevelopment. It needs redevelopment. I totally respect you know, what Alice has said. I, Alice, I can't believe you still come to all these meetings. You're like always here um, for I don't know how many decades. Um, so, But I appreciate what she says, and I know it's a lot of change. But we have to also recognize that the city commission passed in 2020 the all race delray comprehensive plan and identified real needs that the city has in terms of housing shortages and we're not talking about you know only in delray is a four-story or five-story building considered a high-rise it's a very large site and if you look at the lot coverage in the far and how it's set back against the road i think the size and the height is appropriate for in order for us to meet the requirements of the 2020 comprehensive plan. Mm-hmm. I'm just, you know, going back to what I was asking. Um, you know, it's like when you put a new carpeting and then your walls don't look so. I mean, I just think that if this building's going to be so um, noteworthy as you drive by to have the PNC Bank, which really doesn't have an architectural style. No. No. And then the we we bought the property. We didn't design those buildings. Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> To make it flow better so that as you drive by, I mean, because you've got the Shell gas station and you got, you know, to make this really stand out and just have these two other buildings plunked there to me, I, and it's just, again, it's an opinion. That was the only thing. Um, I just would like to see some freshening up of those two done also. Certainly, we will look at um, when the maintenance of those buildings come due and coming back before you guys and seeing, you know, what we could do in the future and when the maintenance of those buildings, when, we're, when it's time for us to, you know, repaint and, um, and, and in terms of the signage, we're stuck with the signage. It's, it's part of their tenants. We have to, you know, get lease approvals, lease amendment approvals if we we're going to make any changes to those buildings. Okay. That was, that was only my comment. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for that. Uh, So my comments. Um, So anyone here from the Northeast who, uh, how pretty it is outside right after it snows? Yeah. (laughs) Right? That beautiful white. And then the salt truck comes and everything comes and all of a sudden that beautiful white is not so beautiful anymore. Uh, I think aesthetically this building in white is beautiful. I think it's going to, it rentals, right? They're rental units? Yeah. Um, so depending on the quality of your maintenance company, um, we're going to have a not so aesthetically beautiful on paper potential anymore. So um, aesthetically and design-wise, I think um, you knock the ball out the park. I am, however, concerned because it is rental units. There is no HOA um, guidelines and requirements to require owners to uh, maintain the property to any particular standards. And um, quality maintenance companies come and go, property managers come and go. So I do have a concern about that. Um, I think uh, adding some, no, we, we've gone from one extreme to the other, right? Uh, either very dark or complete gray to complete, complete white. But I think ideally a mixture of the architectural style I'm on board with. Um, but one of the things the diversity in color does, particularly in rental units, is to help hide the ugly and reduce your maintenance costs over time in terms of maintenance. So, um, and while the, the, what's the side where, um, I'm so glad you didn't get in trouble for being on, on the property. Um, that point is quite clear and I agree with that. Uh, but there is, a, there was a side where you showed just the, just a sliver of that side where that was 
just very high and very massive and yeah. and very white. I, I think I know what you mean. I don't see it. No. It it was part of the elevation. This that one. yeah. 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 <clears throat> yes. Yes. That concerns me uh, because we are Delray. Um, we're an ocean side city. We're all American city. We've just incorporated um, art for social change and you know some approaches. And I, I think there's some missed opportunities here to incorporate some color to be better representative of a beachside, all-American city. Um, but, but it's a good project. It's a well-designed project. So I think it takes into consideration a diverse group of um, economic, um, cultural households, and I, I applaud you for that. Um, I can't get on board with the color, though, as of right now. Um, as it relates to this masses of a business. I do agree with um, our public comment a little bit. It is rather large and these projects are always great until about five years in um, and because they're rentals and not fee simple, I have some concerns about the maintenance. But maybe by then you'll be on the same page and come back with um, painting, <laughs> uh, color change, who knows. Uh, those are the comments I have. Are there any other board comments? I just wanted to say thank you again, too, for the uh, workforce housing and going above and beyond, but I didn't mention that ahead uh, before, so thank you. All right. If there are no other comments, I'd like to entertain a motion. Um, go ahead. Do you want? No, read you. Okay. You go. Um, okay. I move approval of the Class 5 site plan application, including a landscape plan and architectural elevations 2023-047. For the Linton at 277 unit multifamily residential development on the property located at 500, 510, and 520 Linton Boulevard by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. I have a second? A second. I have a first and a second. Roll call, please. Okay. Dana Adler, Benjamin Baffer, and Carol Perez are absent. Stephen Cohen? No. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdoe? Yes. Annette Gray? No. So technically the, the um, motion has failed at this point. So um, if you want to either try another motion, if there's some type of motion to continue with direction, I don't know if the applicant would prefer that or if they'd rather I um, request a motion to defer um, to the next Brad board meeting when we have a full um, board here, since it's a 2-2. Two -two. Um, we have to do one ever. We can't say next, right? Do we, yeah, do we want some direction? Yeah, I think you could do a motion to continue with direction and provide some direction, and then they could come back to the next Brad meeting um, when there's a full board and just for clarification I think past legal advice was we cannot do two specific next board meeting right I don't know is it necessary no it's not necessary anyway yeah, it's because. not necessary anyway so if you just move to continue with direction and then you know staff and applicant will get together on the next best available date and, um, and, and, you know, go ahead and include direction that might make it easier for the applicant to bring it back to with a. Um, so am I able to, to weigh in here? Yeah, definitely. Waiting? Okay. Please. So my direction would be to add some diversity to the coloring of the building in terms of shading and a, a color palette. Um, that is absolutely inclusive of the white, but um, that will keep the integrity of the quality of the, bu the building over time. But. Yeah, and I totally agree. Yeah, I, I like the white, but I think it needs a little bit more color. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little flat, but that picture is just, uh, that's not a... <sighs> that's a parking garage that oh. we designed to make it look like and units. It's got the green so, wall and everything, I see that. Well, just, I mean, it has a, the green wall. Yeah. I mean, if Anthea and Kelly, I'm not quite sure what 
if this is a possibility, if that's the only comment, I would be happy to voluntarily proffer at this time to add color um, to to the building so that I don't have to, if, if that's their only issue. Yeah, if, if that's the only concern at this point. We have to know the color that you yeah, have in on this. Is but can I do it as a, as a class one and color change it with through administrative approval? We don't. Kind of defer to development services on this one if you unfortunately, think Unfortunately, <laughs> for new development, we don't have an administrative route for colors. And for existing development, we've established a consent agenda in the meantime. But I, I think this is part of why Delray Central had to, to come back with a different um, palette that they showed the board recently. So I think. Um, from a staff's perspective, um, we just need to know from the from the board discussion exactly, or, or as close. Thank you, Miss Gray, for explaining. We were I think we were taken a little bit off guard because we didn't hear the board direct discussion leading us to I did not, not supporting the project. And so I think if the applicant is going to come back, the thing the best thing that we can do is is try to articulate the concerns that we have. Um, so the way I heard it just clear, now, but I think color is the only issue, um, Mr. Cohen and Ms. Gray, you have? Yeah. Because the, the materials are so close together, having just two materials in terms of surfacing, you're not able to pick up the details in the building with just a flat white, right? Um, so we don't get aesthetically the depth of the design so you can add shadowing in terms of color if you're no going I understand to I just um, wanted to make sure that's your only concern that you want me to add color to the building and possibly explore the, the mural um, option that the board the city now has at your disposal if you didn't want to do full color you said that's a garage that you use to make aesthetically more architectural pleasing, so maybe some mural opportunities there. And so, yes, so you're, the answer to your question is yes. Um, color is the, is the primary issue with the building, with the project. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just, sorry, but I'm concerned. You start put, that's a major building. You start making all these different colors on it and things, I think it's gonna make it look too chopped up. I think it's inconsistent with the Florida vernacular style and architectural integrity is very important to me, but I certainly respect and understand Mr. Cohen and Ms. Gray's objections. And um, obviously we don't, have a full, we don't have a full board here, but like Anthea um, said, I wasn't, ex based on the comments and the discussion, I wasn't expecting a, um, a no, no vote. Um, and had this been a fee simple with an HOA that is going to be very, vivid in their oversight for maintenance and quality of the building, I, I would have probably gone a different direction, but it is not. I don't um, know if you're familiar with all of our properties, but we pride ourselves, we're local developers. We, Craig and I both live, Craig Menon and myself both live in Delray. Um, we pride ourselves in maintaining our properties and designing top of the line properties and building top of the line properties. We partnered with Richmond Group because of their multifamily experience. We thought because we didn't have the experience in terms of operating a multifamily development and some of the concerns that you raise in terms of the long-term maintenance. But um, I think we've always been cautioned from legal about designing from the dais. So at this point, um, you, you certainly do have the option of leaving as it is and coming back for a full board and see what happens, or you can take some of our concerns, um, make modifications and pick it back. Well, it's definitely in your court. I think you would just need to do a motion still to we continue with the direction. Um, Motions. The continue with direction one is is really just a move to continue with direction as stated if, if you yeah. if the board is going to agree to that and I think the applicant understands the direction and if you know yeah, if you I, I just wanted to say I mean it, it, I see what you're saying and I see what you're saying too much color is also yeah. not the way to go but uh, if you look around Delray you'll see a lot of buildings with you know subtle 
color usage. And, I know, but on, it all adds on Linton, I believe there's so many colors because yes. it's mostly commercial. And so you're passing a Shell gas station and then there's a Chipotle and then there's a Whole Foods and then there's, you know, other things that have a lot of color where I think sure. the white is better because it's going to kind of blend into the skyline, especially being that high. Right. And you're going to have two, the PNC Bank and the other building, Thank you. they're colorful. You're having those in front. And I don't know because the building's white, my house is white. And that doesn't mean that because my house is white, I'm not gonna take care of it. If it was yellow, that I would take better care of it. So I don't know that the color is the determining factor as to the maintenance of the property. Color is the biggest thing we see on this property. I mean, as, as professionals, we understand the quality of the design, but this is called site plan and appearance mm -hmm. board. Right. So, um, my opinion won't change tonight, so we can yeah. um, make a decision. Or, so, or. just is, so is that option try D? A move to continue a direction um, and see if you get a full board consensus on right. it. Move to continue with direction. Do we need a second? The list of second. Benjamin Baffer and Carol Perez are absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdo? Yes. Annette Gray? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a request for a little bio break, so maybe about two minutes. Time to do you say two minutes or <laughs> five? Okay. Five minutes. We'll, we'll be back in about five minutes. Five minutes. And we have one more. to take them to sporting events on Saturday. <laughs> Let me see my busy schedule here. Right. Oh. Did they leave? Does she want Michigan's the same way. I'm from Michigan, and I'm so glad to be gone. <laughs> the first one, it's like, oh, and then it's like, ugh. <laughs> April, and it's snowing. <laughs> You know, I live off of Linton, and I go by there every day. The, um, we have a problem out here. It is freezing cold in here. All right, let me see if I can change it. 
or pass out woolies. <laughs> Turn the heat on. <laughs> Yeah, I think we Ali, can we resume? Seven times. Yes. The time on my computer. We're going to resume. So. Okay, yeah, I'll she, tell Russia. She turned it up. Russia. She did. She she turned it up. <laughs> <laughs> like, you have jokes. Like on an airplane. <laughs> I'm always okay if they keep turning it up. <laughs> it's so cool. It is. <laughs> what time? Oh, I was like, I thought you were going to me out. I'm like, what? Yep, seven, officially. officially. Okay, so um, we're resuming the meeting at 6.59, is that right? And for the record, everyone has returned. And we are on item D as in David, Bliss on 4th. And Ms. Rodriguez, you'll present um, that for the record for us, please. So I'd like to enter file number 2022-223 into the record. This is for agenda item 9D, which is for the recommendation to utilize the residential incentive program for Bliss on 4th, located at 10 Southwest 4th Ave. And the applicant is here to present. Okay, are there any ex parte communications that needs to be disclosed at this time? None. No. You don't look like Miss Miskell. I am not Miss Miskell. <laughs> <laughs> Please state your name and address for the record. For the record, Christina Valenki. I am one of Miss Miskell's partners, Adani Miskell and Backman. Uh, my address is 14 Southeast 4th Street in Boca Raton. Um, and it's a pleasure to be here this evening uh, to present to you the Bliss on 4th project. Um, we're really excited to be here. Um, the property itself is highlighted in the pink box. Um, it is within the commercial core future land use designation. The zoning is CBD and specifically within the West Atlantic neighborhood subdistrict. So you see it there um, just off Atlantic Avenue, just south of it. Um, and west of Southwest 4th Avenue, you have the police station, the courthouse, the library um, to the east and uh, the tennis center um, just a little bit to the northeast. Um, and this is really an area that is ripe for redevelopment. It's been identified as an area uh, really needing that revitalization in the West Atlantic uh, neighborhood master plan. Um, and so we're hoping to come here and spark some of that redevelopment. Um, it is currently developed with a single family home on a portion of the property. I believe it's about a 9,000 or sorry, 900 square foot home. It's not a 
large home by any means. Um, most of the remaining area is just sodded and um, doesn't really have attractive landscaping. Uh, to the south, that's a parking lot. That's actually a city parking lot. Um, most of the time there are very few cars, if any, that are parked there, uh, but it does provide additional parking next to, again, the police station and the courthouse a little bit further down. And so what we are coming here before you this evening is for a class five site plan application in order to develop a mixed use project with nine residential units and uh, roughly 1,000 square feet of commercial retail space on the ground level. Um, so you see, you know, at the ground level there, there's kind of a, an entry feature with a lot of glass, which would be the retail component. We're hoping, um, you know, it would be maybe a small coffee shop or something to that effect to serve the residents and those within the area. Um, we're also hoping that that commercial uh, component will help continue uh, the, the commercial uses and um, have pedestrians come to this area where right now there's a pedestrian dead space that's identified in the master plan because you have, again, the library, the courthouse, uh, and the police station, which kind of break up uh, the Atlantic Avenue corridor. Um, along this portion of Atlantic Avenue as well. Um, more so on the north side of the street, you do have some newer commercial uh, uses, but that's really lacking on the southern side. Um, so we're hoping that, again, this kind of starts to spark some redevelopment in the area and revitalize the area. And so here is our ground floor site plan. Um, again, we are proposing nine residential uses. Uh, it will be a four-story building. So your ground floor retail is, again, located along the uh, street frontage. And then you have a mix of two and three bedroom units on floors two, three, and four. Um, the units will range from 1,337 square feet to 1,578 square feet. And um, this area has a maximum density of 12 dwelling units per acre, but allows developers to go up to 30 dwelling units per acre with the provision of workforce housing. And so by providing 20% of the units as workforce housing, we're able to achieve a higher density and that's subject to city commission approval and that's part of our application here this evening. So with the nine units, we are proposing two of those to be workforce um, and they are required to be uh, evenly dispersed between the moderate and the low income levels, so one of each here, um, and that would be something that's incorporated into the project. We are also proposing 20 parking spaces. Um, there is a shared parking analysis in the backup that uh, shows that that's adequate parking. Um, there is a garage um, that kind of separates the parking areas uh, that will be open while that commercial use is in operation. So for regular business hours, if it's 10 to 6, um, that garage door will be open, but it will be closed after the commercial use closes so that it provides some security overnight to the residents. Uh, the frontage type is a porch with store front uh, frontage type. It is a masonry mod modern architecture design. And again, four stories, 44 feet in height, we are permitted to go up to 54 feet in height within this area. And again, we are uh, proposing to improve and enhance the streetscape. Again, per the uh, West Atlantic Neighborhood Master Plan, it identifies this area as an area that really needs that enhancement to the streetscape. So we are hoping to contribute to that. And here you have your typical residential floor plan. You have kind of your elevator, stairwell, and lobby in the center, um, and then access to, again, about three residential units per floor um, on floors two, three, and four. 
Uh, here is our proposed landscape plan. I believe we have 22 shade trees and four palms. The palms are uh, kind of focused around the entryways to really enhance uh, that entry feature. Um, and we have shade trees throughout, uh, mostly along the perimeter of the property, uh, hedge and other shrubs and accent plants as well. Um, we also have a rooftop amenity deck where additional landscaping will be provided. Again, um, some of that will be seen from the streetscape, which uh, will provide a nice attractive appearance from the upper levels um, and it provides a really nice amenity for those residents that will be living in this project. And so just to quickly go over the required findings, um, your staff report really details them fairly thoroughly. Um, the city staff here does a really good, excellent job, beyond excellent job going through them in so much detail, most detail I think I've seen in any jurisdiction. Um, but we are consistent with the future land use map. We do meet the concurrency requirements for drainage, potable water, sewer transportation, um, et cetera. Uh, overall consistency, again, we are providing 20 percent workforce housing for low and uh, moderate income families. Um, we are providing for that transition from the activity of West Atlantic Avenue to the residential neighborhood. Um, this area does allow for the commercial uh, use as a component uh, to the project and then the CBD actually extends uh, throughout the block so future redevelopment can occur that is kind of consistent with what we're proposing um, within this block and we're hopeful that new commercial op the new commercial opportunities will encourage new businesses within the existing buildings that um, are in proximity of this and currently some of those are vacant um, and again, the revitalization potential is particularly important given the pedestrian dead zone. Uh, we are consistent with the city's comprehensive plan. Um, I've just noted a few of the policies uh, that we are consistent with, not nearly the number that uh, was included in the last presentation, um, but the comprehensive plan does allow for the density increase um, of 30 to 100 dwelling units per acre in the commercial core. That's been uh, detailed as 30 dwelling units per acre within the land development regulations, so that's the maximum in this particular area. Um, but through the provision of workforce housing incentives. Uh, NDC 2.8.3 notes that we should continue to utilize the workforce housing program and incentives uh, to allow increased development where appropriate and uh, compatible. Um, and, or sorry, housing objective 3.2 is to expand the housing supply. There's obviously a housing shortage uh, in South Florida in general, and this will allow for a variety of housing at different income levels. And with that, um, I know staff will have a thorough presentation as well. Our team is available to answer any questions you may have following that presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for the city, Mr. Sor Ms. Rodriguez. I keep wanting to say Ms. Alvarez, but I, I remembered that you've changed. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so we're looking for a recommendation to for city commission for this class five uh, development to utilize the residential incentive program to increase the density from 12 dwelling units per acre to 27.3 dwelling units per acre on this property. The property is zoned CBD in the West Atlantic neighborhood subdistrict within, specifically within the West Atlantic commercial area. Its current use is a vacant single family residence. And the property is located on Southwest 4th Ave, one block from West Atlantic Ave. The West Atlantic neighborhood commercial area, which allows commercial uses to extend 150 feet from Atlantic Ave is to assist in providing an appropriate transition into the residences. It is also across from a community facility 
police station, zoned police station, which according to the West Atlantic Master Plan, these community, community facilities create that pedestrian dead zone on Southwest 4th Ave. The development is a 19,216 square foot four story mixed use structure and the first story consists of a 1,160 square foot retail and residential lobby. In the upper stories is the residential portion consisting of nine, two, and three bedroom units. The project includes a rooftop terrace with outdoor amenities. And the architectural style is masonry modern and has a frontage type of porch with storefront for the retail. The height is at 44 feet, four stories. Its total is at 56 feet at the top of the elevator overrun and the development is proposing to use 20 spaces, parking spaces, and is requesting an increase in density from the 12 dwelling units per acre to 27.3 dwelling units per acre, utilizing that residential incentive program. So with the full review of the performance standards, the revitalization incentive allows the increase up to 30 dwelling units per acre. And for reference, the max standard would be at three units. And with the incentive, the max is at 9.9, nine units. And with the required 20% 20 20 workforce housing, that's tw uh, two workforce housing units that will be required. The development meets the concurrency of the Always Delray Comprehensive Plan. And also to note that park impact fees will be as assessed at $500 per unit and collected at the building permit stage. The development generally meets the performance standards of the and the comprehensive plan and the West Atlantic Master Plan. The project com complies with max intensity and density of the commercial core land use and it proposes a variety of different housing types it also includes the workforce housing incentives, and the project encourages additional development in the area and pedestrian activity on Southwest 4th Ave. As for the LDR standards, <coughs> the development standards are met. Um, the project does not exceed the max required height. It exceeds the, the minimum streetscape standards. The porch and storefront meet the frontage type standards, required parking is met with 20 spaces exactly. And using the incentive program, the density is maxed at nine units, which is the 27.3 dwelling units per acre. So the CBD residential incentive program is the only way to increase density in these CBD properties. This is to utilize the density, to utilize the density increase, the development must provide 20% of workforce housing. In this case, the 20% of the nine units is two. So, the two. so two of the nine units must be workforce housing and they must be equally distributed between low and moderate income levels. So one would be low and one would be moderate. The approval process is FRAB making a recommendation to city commission on the entire site plan and the city commission takes final action for the site plan and the increased density. For the landscape required findings, the proposal is in compliance with section 4616. It includes the removal of five trees and four palms, and then one of the existing trees will remain and count as the required tree count of the 23 required. So the minimum architectural elevation requirements include showing of proper design concepts, honest design construction, and, appropriate, and it's, it's appropriate with the surrounding. The following criteria must be met. It contributes to the image of the city, does not depreciate the appearance and value of its, uh, the environment, and is in harmony with the area. Uh, some masonry modern defining characteristics that this project utilizes is the use of stucco, entries emphasized with a, a deep recess and wood accents. Um, there's the abstract geometries with carved spaces. Um, the project has been reviewed by the CRA and DDA, and the DDA memo is included in, the, in your attachments, showing a recommendation to approve six to zero.
I will also note that there are some technical notes that need to be resolved prior to certification or the issuance of a building permit. Um, one I'd like to mention is the ordinance number 3022, which requires new construction consisting of 15,000 gross floor area, and it shall achieve at least the minimum level of certification from any from a green building certification entity. Um, this concludes my presentation. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, so is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this particular item? Fence 707 Place Tevat. Um, can you put up a map with this building fitting on top of it somehow and show the rest of the street? Yeah, that's good. So, what is that? To the east, is that the street or a pond of some sort? The east. Um, your, your comment should just be a comment and not like it shouldn't be a back and forth between the board. If a board member wants to answer, you know, it's at your discretion, but it's generally just a comment. Well, I'm not sure what that she's referring to, but this is the tennis center is across the street. The police station is to the east, and that is the pink building that sits there on the corner, right? I'm, I'm in the right area because I am 10. Yes. Okay, yeah. very good. Yes. So, um, Ms. Alice, wh what are you trying to get at? Um, I'm trying to figure out how this big, tall building is going to impact this very small level residential housing. Okay. Um, all right, so we'll take those comments and your question and, and we'll, we'll and, discuss them. Um, because, see, there is some sort of a building already on that parcel of land, so they're gonna tear that down. And then, I don't know if you have a further picture extending down the rest of the street there. Respectfully, Ms. Alice, just go ahead and tell us what your concerns are. I didn't start your timer. Um, just go ahead and tell us what your concerns are. I'm concerned about what is going to be a four-story mixed-use building moving into a very solid residential neighborhood. And I don't know how the parking is going to be established, but then the vehicles will be cutting through the neighborhood unless you've got some kind of right turn only onto Atlantic Avenue or set up the parking arrangement so that the vehicles aren't fe feeding into the residential area. Okay. And there is open space there, and I'm concerned that the if you let this big thing going in there, then somebody's going to decide, well, let's get the city to give us the rest of the land that's down there. And we want to keep this residential. And I'm, I'm looking at, um, I've looked at sort of the pictures, but this big tall building is going to cast a shadow onto the neighborhood in that little park that's down there. Actually, I think you're you're um, you're not envisioning where the building actually is, okay. but we'll try to incorporate your concerns into our comments. But okay. th thank you very much. Because it is residential. Okay, thank that you. They're moving into. Okay. With your permission. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, do you have any rebuttal to the? City's presentation at this point. You want to address the concerns for Ms. Alice? 
I'm happy to try and address some of those concerns to the best of my ability. Um, again, this this block itself is zoned CBD. It's part of the West Atlantic Neighborhood District. Um, so, you know, the other properties in this area, should they be redeveloped, would be entitled to the same height density, um, you know, FAR requirements that we're providing. Um, I believe the FAR in this area allows up to 3.0 and we're a fraction of that, um, I believe at 1.33. So comparatively, um, you know, in terms of FAR, we are not as big as we could be. Um, that being said, you know, we're across from the police station. We have commercial uses along Atlantic Avenue um, immediately to the south. It's not a residential home. It's a city parking lot. Um, and then even to our rear, half of that site is uh, developed with a commercial use. It's currently the checkers. Um, so, you know, in terms of impacts to the residential neighborhood, I don't believe that, you know, they're that great considering we're not actually surrounded by those single family homes. They are a little bit further to the south. Um, and, you know, again, I think this area is prime for some redevelopment. Um, I, I think it's certainly needed both along Atlantic Avenue in this area um, and, you know, to the blocks that are adjacent to it. And we're hoping to bring some of that, uh, you know, redevelopment potential and, and spark that in this area. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. And does uh, Ms. Rodriguez, the staff, has any rebuttal to? Okay, great. I think the only thing I would add, I think the applicant did a good job answering the question. The building would go next door to the Weidman building, um, and it is going to provide all of the parking through a curb cut kind of close to where the existing building that will be removed is, and, and it provides ample parking. It meets or exceeds the code for the parking necessary for the new units. Correct. I think that was everything. And, yes, and look, the scale... It is new, and the scale is different than what's there, and you know that that is a change, but um, it is not directly impacting single family. Thank you. Okay, thank you both. Okay, <coughs> where do we where did we leave off? Yes. I will let my colleagues address the masonry modern, but for me, I just have a quick question regarding the city parking lot behind. Will there be access for people to park for the, for the perhaps coffee shop or anything? So we've accounted for the required parking within our mm -hmm. property. Um, I believe that parking lot next door is a public parking area, so it, that could certainly be utilized as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you. That's all. Ms. Linda? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not a fan of the masonry modern. I think we're using it too much, um, but it's a nice project. You've done a nice job of not having to the flatness that can come with uh, masonry modern. Um, the, um, I had a, a, another question. Oh, on the, the very top, that's uh, going to be like an area for there's an amenity area, just, um, you know, seating areas, a little patio terrace um, with nice landscaping, um, no no pool or, you know, active okay. amenities. And w with that area being utilized, you're still under the height requirement? Correct. Okay. I don't have any comments, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, so my question was about the rooftop again, because um, what's different with this is it's shared space now, right? Um, as opposed to the other was private, each had their private space. And so um, I don't know how does that work. Is there guidelines for using the space? It is in the CBD, so I'm not so much concerned. If you live in a downtown, you know there's going to be noise in the downtown. <laughs> um, it's part of the charm. So um, I'm, I'm not so much concerned, and it doesn't seem to be very programmed with barbecue units and those types of things to encourage. Right. Um, it is more of kind of a passive use area, I would say. Um, you know, if 
some residents wanted to go up and enjoy, you know, nice weather, they have a spot to sit and have a drink and, you know, enjoy the fresh air with their colleagues or um, families. So it, it's, it's more intended for that. Again, there's no pool. Um, there, there aren't any like loudspeaker systems that are going to be provided out there. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just a, a nice area for residents to enjoy. Okay. Uh, and if you're, I can, you, if I can add sorry. something, just so everyone involved in the project acknowledges that we've written this down in the staff report. CBD is a little bit different, right? Like there's a, a higher level of activity. Mm -hmm. We don't limit the terrace to that 26 foot limit that, like the previous one of the previous projects that you saw. Um, however, we do limit the hours of activity on the roof. That was my next. So um, they are accessible from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. From 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So if there's a raucous party happening later, <laughs> then then that that we do have those um, that established um, sort of activity level um, that it could be addressed, and and that's the and only. The police will walk next door. Yeah. <laughs> right, right next door. And then right next door. Point. As well. uh, but the other thing is the rooftop. The way that it's illustrated, and I don't know if the plan sheet, if you can see it, it does have. Um, sort of a gathering spot and it looks like maybe a little bit of a wet bar or some things out there so that if you were having a party you would have a, have some some um, ability to you know serve food and use things so there is there is a program on top of the roof but it's well it's within the guidelines of what's allowed and again this is a little bit easier because we do have the hours established for downtown um, so and so my follow-up question was going to do, be, do we also have guideline hours for the commercial use downstairs? So it's we supposed do. to be a coffee shop, but. Right, so the um, right now the code allows, uh, I believe businesses to be open until midnight. Um, and if you want to be open beyond that, it depends how close you are to single family or to residential, and it requires a conditional use to go beyond those hours. So if you're right downstairs, it's right. midnight at the moment? At the moment. Um, and I don't know if these are going to be condos or <laughs> rental, but it would. it's in the, you know, there's nine units, you know, so there's... Um, Either the HOA is going to control what's happening in the ground floor or the developer is going to own the entire building and then hear from nine different households that there's a problem as well. So, and then there's always us, the city, but hopefully you'll have a lovely tenant that will, you know, be compatible with the neighbors upstairs. And then I just wanted to clarify because this area is in desperate need of workforce housing and affordable housing. Um, I'm a little sad that only two is, is to the potential capacity or is it the choice of the client? Two meets the requirement of 20% of the nine that are being mm -hmm. provided. So seven would be market rate and two would be um, restricted to, to workforce housing. Okay. All right. Um, those are my comments and questions. Thank you both for your patience. Are there any additional board discussions or comments? Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion. I'm busy tonight. <laughs> Move to recommend approval to the City Commission for the utilization of the Residential Incentive Program to increase the density. This is right, right? Yeah. To increase the density from 12 um, to 27 for the provision of two workforce housing units at the low and moderate levels associated with the redevelopment of the property located at 10 Southwest 4th Avenue Bliss on 4th. That includes a class 5 site plan, landscape plan, and architectural elevation for the construction of the four-story mixed-use building containing a 1,160-square-foot retail bay and nine residential units by finding that the request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Second. I have a first and a second roll call, please. Okay. Dana Adler. Benjamin Baffer and Carol Perez are absent. Stephen Cohen? Yes. Allison Thomas? Yes. Linda Perdoe? Yes. Nick Ray? Yes. Thank you very much. We appreciate Thank your time you this luck. evening. Okay, so looks like we have no reports. Do we have staff comments? I'm sorry, I turned it off. Um, 
So a couple of, of things. Susie's helping me get the other presentation up. Um, we do have to shift the next BRAB meeting forward. I'm hoping you've all been notified of that. It would be May 10th instead of the 24th. Mm -hmm. uh, there's audiovisual improvements being done in the chambers, and so we're trying to move the board's meetings out of the way so that that work can be done. Um, so it's kind of a quick turnaround. Thank you for your service. <laughs> um, and then um, the one after that would be June 28th. We are moving into summer, so you know, please, uh, you know, let us know um, if you're not going to be available and, and all of those good things. We can make sure we have a quorum. Uh, the other item that I think is particularly important for this board is the um, the ordinance that is moving through for second reading on the May 16th City Commission meeting, which is um, moving the Art Deco and the masonry modern style use from a uh, SPRAB um, process to a recommendation via SPRAB to commission. Um, there has been the, the the concerns that this board has raised have been heard and they, they're also shared by uh, the community. So um, we are, it's not really slowing the process down, but it's making sure there's uh, opportunity for the public to view these styles. And, you know, we have a long history actually of DECO in Palm Beach County. It just, we need to try to figure out how to have a result that is more appropriate for Delray and then masonry modern being really the predominant style constantly coming through. Mm -hmm. um, some of it has, is detailed with, you know, wood and not lots of other things. And then you see the other ones which are much more stark. Mm -hmm. And so this is an effort to make sure there's a lot of input into the final, final design and, and provide some reinforcement to what this board is, is looking at as well. So that's on, again, second reading on May 16th. I think that's everything that I have now. Okay. I don't have any. No attorney Thank comments. You. Any board comments? No. Uh, I do have a request. Um, so what was always very helpful in the presentations before were images of adjacent properties. So the landscape is changing so fast. The minute I think I know what a location looks like and if I don't have enough time to drive by um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure because one of the things we have to say is it consistent with you know the neighborhood da, 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 da. so I'd like to see if we could try to um, resume doing that uh, because the client is always going to say it is consistent with the neighborhood that is an <laughs> excellent point and to further that there was something we approved few months ago that's in the same sort of neighborhood that I think would look good on the last item but wasn't sure how close it was and then by the time I talked I forgot about it so that's an excellent point and that was a good example tonight we had a developer who he has done three two projects in a neighborhood and now the third project is gonna look like the other two right so now that entire street looks bad. Uh, so that would be helpful to me um, Any other comments? All right, I move we adjourn. Do I have to knock the gavel? Yep. There you there go. go. Not too hard, but. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>